Think about television. Uh, oh, I love television. <laughs> like being on television? Uh, no, I just like to watch soap operas. The daytime kind? Of yeah. In the morning kind. Morning time. Is that so back to the time you uh, used to listen to the all radio stuff? Uh, oh, yeah. But you don't uh, much like appearing on television yourself? Uh, no. Or painting on television uh, right now? No. <laughs> Well, just for the sake of the audience, uh, you might say that what he's doing is a screen painting of an electric chair, I believe, right? Yeah. What made you think of doing electric chair? Uh, oh, I just think they're beautiful. Beautiful? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think uh, you come to represent pop art more than maybe anybody else. Uh, what is pop art, anyway? How would you define it? Oh, can you ask that? Yeah, I, uh, they usually ask me these technical questions. You know? <laughs> uh, I suppose if you had to make a definition, it would be uh, painting or sculpture that revolves around commercial imagery or industrial images. Uh, signs and symbols from the everyday life, things that you see all the time, repeated interminably, done in a sort of very stylized way. Uh, usually the images themselves don't come from the actual subject. The artist takes the image from somebody else's uh, reproduction, somebody else's depiction of it, usually a photograph uh, or a movie clipping, something from a magazine, usually. That's probably the closest you can get to a general definition, mm. familiar images. Yeah, well, uh, most of us are aware of what the critics have said about it. Uh, one of the things they say is that, well, they say different things, but one of the things they say is that uh, this is sort of anti-art or art without feeling, what have you. Uh, you got an emotional kick out of, the, uh, out of seeing these things that you do. I mean, seeing them originally. You have that big Elvis Presley thing. You like Elvis Presley movies. Right? Oh, yes. Mm. Well, it just gives us something to do every day. I mean, that's the reason we do it. I mean, could you pick something else just as arbitrarily? Oh, yeah. There's a vast feel it takes in everything in modern life. Oh, yeah. Andy picked the carpet bag as last year's picture of the year. I think he's the only person who made a list at all of any kind of 10 best pictures to pick the carpet bag as, which indicates, I think, to some extent, the taste of movies. Do you like TV commercials? Oh, yeah. I was just thinking today that they should have uh, all TV commercials with uh, just soap operas in between, you know, like a little bit less soap operas and more TV commercials. But make them more entertaining that you'd, you'd have people watching the commercials like you watch, you know, soap opera or something like that. Well, who let's, get, let's get on to Andy's movies and to movies generally. I've heard a rumor, I'm sure Mr. Carp will deny it, or maybe he started the rumor that Andy's going to give up, uh, you might say, the painting here, the, the uh, static painting in favor of moving oh, pictures. And I think it might be mentioned that, uh, that Andy's been... It's prolific, even not more prolific, probably speaking in movies, than he has been in uh, oh, other right things. Here. Well, he isn't going to make a living at it, I can tell you that. <laughs> but if you see three minutes of his movies, you see much uh, of all of it. Actually, the image more or less goes on and on. It's sort of a comfort in a way to be able to walk back about six hours later and see the same image going on. But that's what it amounts to. We have a new one called Screen Test. Screen Test. Yeah. Who's in it? Um, Mario Montez. He's, he's in Harlem. Yeah. He's the one who eats the banana. Yeah. I mean, the, the action of this whole movie is, is Mario Montez eating banana for about an hour and a half. Or eating one banana after another, rather, a sort of cyclical thing. I mean, um, and did you see that tomorrow, the house of tomorrow, maybe, instead of having, say, a portrait on the wall, a static portrait, you might have one of those things, a motion picture of a Somebody says your wife just, or oh, your yeah, no. wife just, so on, and that'll be like a like an objet d'art rather than what we come to know as a movie. I mean, has that caught on yet? Uh, Any collectors come along for that? You know, we're thinking of doing a new movie, and uh, we've been interviewing waitresses, so we're going to go into all the big fruits. What's the best restaurant you go to for the waitresses? Uh, big fruits. Big fruits. Yeah. Oh, you got good types there. <laughs> And, uh, They're mostly immigrants, aren't they? Just recently arrived. Uh, I don't know. No, I, I think I think Shrabs hires them. Uh, yeah, Shrabs. Sure, yeah. They have the Irish. Immigrants, yeah. They're cheap. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
So we're, we're doing a waitress. Movie. What's the connection between your movie and waitresses? I mean, it's going to be about waitresses. Um, no, it's just that in, in Hollywood, all these people are always are waitresses, <laughs> and they're always discovered. Your own movies are the most of the time you, you you take one camera set up and you just leave the camera so the film runs out and it's the film. Scene four, take one. Are you talking now? No, you're not talking. You're not allowed to talk. Yeah. You see if it's focused. <laughs> Is there no sound on this? I can ask. Right. Oh, no, that's not there. That's the light meter. Uh, oh, just just don't say anything when that when I plug it in. But the, look more there a little bit. Well, yeah. Okay. Sure. What's the name of this picture? It's called Fifty. Just Fifty. Yeah. <laughs> fifty what? Oh, fifty. Just Fifty. Just Fifty. Oh, you're on. You can't talk. <laughs> I can talk. I'll tell you. Let me okay. ask the questions, Annie. Yeah. Well, is it library? What's the library reading, do you think? Anyone have to do Four? No. Did you answer that? It's four. Okay, we'll put it on four. Okay, you're on. You can't talk. That's all. That's all. You stay there for three minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, War movies make themselves. <laughs> Your three minutes are up, I think. Yeah, yeah so it's about three. It only, it only accentuates, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, while Andy is uh, right. doing what uh, Latin we call stretching canvas, which I guess is what Artists do on television to show their artists. Why don't we put a blob of you back and forth and let Andy act as scorekeeper on them, okay? Or Andy, the things that Andy is stretching are these colored blowouts of a picture of Jackie Kennedy. And I think Jack is in the background uh, somewhat. And standing, sitting right, be uh, standing right behind you is Elizabeth Taylor. Now, these are the two most frequent faces that appear in these fan magazines. In fact, a lot of people criticize fan magazines for exploiting Jackie and so forth. And I just wonder at the instinct that leads Annie to seize upon these two things, which are really the symbols of fan magazines, etc. I mean, is it just accident or coincidence or what? Well, we could ask Andy how he feels about that. Is it an accident? Or are you as impressed by seeing these things all the time? Nobody else is. What it amounts to, I mean... We all see them, but Andy says, well, there they are. I'm going to show them to you again, you know, in yeah. his own way. That's what it seems like. I suppose it comes automatically from his peculiar instinct. But is this, uh, how do you feel about those fan magazines that, you know, have these silly stories about Jackie? Do you like the story? Do you like the heads on them? Or oh, yeah. You no, know, I like the whole story. Mm -hmm. Andy yeah. sits back with such power. And his sitting back is significant, you know. <laughs> it's... it's it's the force of detachment that it represents, I think. And that probably, in some instances, has much force as the man of action. You know. Did you, uh, did you buy that, Andy? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that Andy's art has a lot of what we call instant nostalgia built into it. These pictures are already nostalgic as soon as they occur. Let's get into the, maybe the final, ultimate two questions, perhaps the least important, perhaps the most important. Is all this, Andy does, is it good? Is it art? Yeah. May I ask if uh, pop art pretends to be great art? Well, we, I haven't thought, well, I don't know. We left pop art. We left pop art. Oh, well, what are we left with? New art. Oh, new art. Pop art is a sign of the time. It's with us to stay with us. It's dead all time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I disagree completely. I, I don't see that it is with us. Do you think that Michelangelo, when he was making pictures, set out to make great art? I don't think he had to. I think that it was embodied in the work that he presented. You don't think he consciously set out to do it? <laughs> just briefly. Uh, do you have anything in mind when you start to paint? Well, uh, 
Well, I just have to read a magazine. You get ideas from, from magazines, man? Uh, yeah. What uh, magazine were you reading? What was the story you were reading when you painted Elizabeth Taylor? Uh, it was when she was dying. He's a living dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the I think the Dying. My husband bought me an electric chair. Yellow one. He was, uh, he, I think he had a good time. It was a swing party. Yeah. Every artist in town was there. Mm-hmm. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. However, uh-huh. you know, I mean, it's the world. Like Randy Warhol. How do you like the show? I think it's perfect. 